Hello, everyone, and welcome to Rising Stories Podcast. I'm Kareen Sandifer, your host. A few years ago, I decided to devote my time to empowering other women. Since then, I have coached countless women and a few men, helped women build their businesses, started a lean in chapter in Nashville, met Cheryl Sandberg, and started this podcast. I interview women who are following their dreams and running their companies. We talk about best business practices, productivity tips, favorite apps, and what they are loving these days. If you are someone who needs some encouragement to launch your dream, or if you want to hear about how to work at your highest level, or maybe you just love hearing stories from fascinating women, then this podcast is for you. My guest today is designer, blogger, bungalow cottage homeowner, Shavonda Gardner. Y'all, I truly love this lady. She is so honest about everything. I mean everything. She's honest about her personal life and her home. She's showing you all kinds of things that she's doing to her cottage bungalow. She is one of my favorite lifestyle influencers on Instagram. In fact, that is where I found her and we became fast friends. During our chat on the show, Shavonda and I talk about the benefits of living in a smaller space and the things that it can bring to your family. Great, great information, and I can't wait for you to hear. And I love that she mentioned audiobooks because, as you know, I am loving audiobooks myself, and I've partnered with Audible to give a gift of a free audiobook with a free trial from Audible, and all you have to do is click on the link below in the show notes. Shavonda and I also talk about color and books that she's reading, and also she talks about her favorite designers. I can't wait for you to hear her, but before we begin, I would love it if you would join me on Instagram. Join the fun on Sunday nights as I share my productivity tips for the week. In August, I'm headed out to California to meet other Lean In leaders, so make sure you are following my Instagram stories so you don't miss all the fun. You can find me at Kareen Sandifer. Here is my conversation with Shavonda Gardner. Hi, Shavonda. Hi. How are you? I'm wonderful. How are you? Good. Thanks so much for coming on. Thank you so much for having me. I love your Instagram and that's, I think that's how I found you. I can't even remember now, but I've been following you for some time and I love your home. You feature your home a lot, plants a lot. What, um, how did you get your start? How did, how did your whole, um, I guess your popularity, because you are really hot, like people are like flocking and (laughs) <laughs> Asking you questions, I love when you post, you know, things that like people say things and I'm like, oh, yeah. I love it. I love it. Um, well, thank you so much. Um, yeah, so I got my start actually through blogging. Like this was like before blogging was like even a popular thing. So I started blogging, very like loosely blogging, I'd say probably about seven years ago now. Uh, seven or eight years ago. And so that's really how I got my start into this whole like social media thing. Of course, back when I started blogging, like Instagram wasn't a thing. Pinterest, I think was maybe just barely starting. Mm -hmm. Um, And so we weren't using things like Twitter and Facebook and like all of these different, different platforms as a form of like creating business necessarily. Um, So yeah, I, you know, I started blogging back when it was like, turn on all the lights and use your point and shoot camera. And now we all know that like, you absolutely (laughs) do not (laughs) ever shoot with the lights turned on. Yeah. So yeah. What was the, what was your content when you started? Cause now your content is about your home. What was, what were you blogging about? So back then my blog was actually under a different name. Um, so I originally started blogging under the name, a home full of color. And I literally have always been blogging about my home and about interior design. Um, Interior design is my love. It's my first love. I did go to school for it. Um, And so back when I started blogging, there weren't very many people, number one, that looked like me, 
that were in the blogging space as it pertained to interior design. Um, and so I also noticed that there wasn't really anyone else who had a very bright and cheery and colorful style. Mm -hmm. So I started blogging just to share my own perspective on design. And, and I used a lot of color, hence the name, a home full of color. Um, and I was very like bold and daring with, you know, like my design choices, which I still am. Um, and so, yeah, so I started blogging exclusively about, um, interiors and DIY and home and all of that. And now I've actually transitioned from a home full of color to SG style, um, which is the SG is for my first and last name, Siobhan Gardner style. And it's really just also really heavy home and interiors, but also like lifestyle um, product that I love, um, you know, travel. It's it's much more of a like a lifestyle based um, blog that. now. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. You know what I love about uh, what you do is I feel like when I'm watching you and I'm reading about your designs, you're not afraid. You're not afraid of color and you're not afraid to try something you know, bold. And a lot right. of people, that's like not our MO. Like normally <laughs> that's not what we would do. <laughs> like that's yeah. not. And so you do kind of, I feel like you inspire people to, um, you know, go ahead and get something bold in, in your home. Go ahead. And I remember you brought in a couple of chairs or a chair and it was like, I think they were green. I can't remember, but I was mm -hmm. like, yeah, that looks good. Like who would have thought, you know, like you, right. so you really kind of go, um, you know, as most designers do and they have, they have their own design, you know, their own style, but I feel like yours is a little bit more bolder. Like I feel like you're, you're taking more, um, step outside of the norm of right. color and with color, right. I guess is what I'm saying. Right. So, um, so I would agree. Um, I'm definitely a fan fan of very bold, moody color. Um, so I gravitate toward like blacks and deep blues and deep greens and purples and just like all of these colors that I feel like people are really scared to commit to, especially black um, and especially as it pertains to a small space because I don't live in a big home. So um, I'm kind of pushing the envelope there just a little bit. Uh, but you know, I just kind of feel like at the end of the day, if I don't like it, I'll change it. And yeah. so uh, for me, that's kind of where I stand with it. I know that it's really hard for like the average, um, homeowner or average person who maybe does not have a, you know, a background in design or maybe design doesn't come naturally for them. I know that it's really difficult for them to kind of think outside of that box. They'd, you know, they rather say, oh, that, you know, that's, I don't know, like that may be a little too off cut for me. So I think for me, like I actually love the fact that I am very bold and I do take chances and I'm not afraid of anything for the most part when it comes to interiors. Um, I kind of leverage that to show people like, OK, look, this is my house. Like this is where I live and I don't live in a big house. And hey, maybe if you've been thinking about painting your walls black, here's my house. I've painted my walls black. This is what they look like. You yeah, know, like there's yeah, nothing yeah. to be afraid of kind of thing. Love that you have, um, incorporated your plants in your mm -hmm. style as well. And you talk about the care and, um, how you've selected them. So I, I just love all that. But one of the things that I wanted to, uh, let people know is that you actually downsized from a larger home to a smaller bungalow cottage type mm -hmm. place. Tell me yeah. more about that. Right. So this year we're coming up on four years since our downsize. Um, and previously we did live in a very, like a much larger builder grade, you know, like tract house. Um, our house was over 2,200 square feet. We had four bedrooms, three bathrooms, you know, plenty of space, two living areas. And, um, one day I just kind of woke up and was like, we aren't even using half of this space in this house and I just don't want to do it anymore. So we sold the house <laughs> and found a little 1940s cottage bungalow 
Um, and we literally split our living in half. So we are now in 1,200 square feet. We are in two bedrooms and one bath. Oh, wow. And Yes. And there are four of us plus a Great Dane. So we upsized all of <laughs> We upsized the family a bit and downsized our living. And we love it. Um, it's definitely been a journey. It's been a transition. Every day we're learning. I mean, we're four years in and there's still things that we have to address to. Like what? What are learn. some things you have to learn when you live in the space that's, that you've downsized to? Um, so pr- like really honestly, the biggest thing has been really getting a grip on exactly what it is that we need before we had so much space. You know, we had two living areas and we had, you know, four bedrooms and we had like all this extra space. Mm -hmm. Um, We do not have that now. We have one living space. We have a tiny dining room. um, And it's, it's just really getting down to the nitty gritty of, okay, what is it that we need? Do we need a big table that seats eight? No, we don't. We need a table that seats the four of us because we're the four who live here and we will make adjustments if we're entertaining or things like that. But it's really just getting a very real, real check into your family's needs and how you actually live. So Mm, that was a big thing that triggered the downsize. So like I said, in our last house, We bought that house thinking like, oh, we have young kids. We're going to grow into it. It's going to give us plenty of space to spread out. Mm -hmm. And we realized that we were literally living, the four of us living our lives actively 80% of the time in a very small percentage of that space. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, the kitchen, the family room was like the hub. It's where we watched TV together as a family, where we did homework, where we, you know, played games. Um, We had an extra bedroom that we didn't really need. Uh, we had like a powder, a bathroom that we weren't really using all that much. So it really just kind of helped us to see what, how we live. And now we're in a home that we use every single square inch of it because it accommodates for how we actually live. Wow. You know, I love that you questioned and that that came about just because we, most of us are not utilizing our space. You know, Mm -hmm. when I think about the homes that, uh, my family and, and my cousins and all that grew up in, we had one bathroom. There were, you know, there was just a three or four of us in my family, but there were, um, seven in my cousins and they like, and they were all mostly girls, five girls, two boys. And they had one bathroom and, and they just made it work, (laughs) you know? And it's like, um, Mm -hmm. and they still love, like, people still love going there. And I think right. people don't realize that, like you said, buy for what your family needs and then accommodate. If it's not your norm, if you're not having 12 people over for dinner every, every night, then don't buy a large, you know, dining room table. Right. I mean, that's just. Yeah. Right. And, and, you know, um, so I was raised in the South. I live in California now, but I was raised in the South. And so my grandmother's house is really the most special home to me. Um, my grandfather built it, um, I believe. And it was small and it is so small. My grandma doesn't even have a dining room. She, our dining table is smack dab in the middle of the kitchen. And there's just, there's a narrow space to walk around. They had one bathroom without a shower. It was like, you know, a little pedestal sink and a big, um, porcelain tub Mm -hmm. and a, like a little toilet. And it, just was the most special home to me. And I still love it so much. And it was tiny. Um, and my grandmother raised, you know, three kids there and has lived there for 50 something years. It's just, you know, really thinking about that and processing that like back in the thirties and forties, people had like six kids and there were two bedrooms. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm two. Like, <laughs> How'd they do that? <laughs> so, right. So I'm like, you know, yeah. We can totally do it. We just have been kind of conditioned to feel like more is better. Bigger is better. Mm-hmm. Um, when for us, that's not the case. Yeah. So, and yeah. you just kind of feel not only do you have to, you know, keep it up, pay for it and, yes. you know, clean it, it but you have, it yes. creates space in your life that you don't even know you have until you don't have exactly. it. 
Exactly. And then it shrinks and you're like, this is manageable. You know, yep. like I, I can actually do, like, I feel like when I'm watching you, you're like, you're doing the things that you, that I've always wanted to do, but I have a larger space and it's like, <laughs> oh man, I cannot do that. <laughs> right. Um, you know, that is, I will say one of the benefits to living in a smaller space. I feel like, um, you can, you can make, you know, re- like some purchases that you just like absolutely love. Like maybe there's a rug that your heart just desires it, but it's like a bajillion dollars. Yeah. And maybe you're like, God, I can't invest that kind of money on this one rug for this one room. I have eight other rooms that I have to decorate. Mm-hmm. Well, you know, when you got a little house, it's like, you know what? I only have so much space. I'm going to make each space special. So if I want to spend a bajillion dollars on this rug, yeah. I can do that because I don't have a million place, spaces that I have to. Right. You're try. decorating uh, less yes. places and you yeah. can spend more on decorating because it's. Right just, you know, a few rooms. Yeah. And yeah, it's just more, it's, it's basically just about being really super intentional, mm-hmm. um, giving attention to things that you wanted to give attention to. Yeah. What's your favorite room in the house? Oh boy. Um, that is so hard. <laughs> <laughs> I bet. Really hard. I love so many spaces. Um, I probably say our living room is my favorite. Um, and that's just because it, for our family, our living room is, is the heart of our home. It's the house. I know for yeah. a lot of people, they yeah. say, oh, the kitchen is the heart of the home. That has never been the case for me. I'm like, honey, my the kitchen is meant to be utilitarian. Like, I need to go in there, I need to cook, and I need to get out. I'm not trying to hang out in the kitchen. Mm-hmm. Um, is it so, connected or open? Is it all open no, to the... Not okay, open. so not open. separate no. kitchen. Yes, Um so I love our living room. It's where we spend time together as a family. We watch movies. We play games. When we entertain our friends, you know, come and gather mm-hmm. there. It's a very special space. Um, and it just feels good. feels like a hug. So it's definitely my favorite space in the house. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, y'all need to see it on Instagram because it's, it's adorable. <laughs> so definitely. So Shavonda, how did you get involved in, um, because you now have a business, it's, you're, you're doing more on Instagram, you're doing, you're connecting with other designers or design um, houses, and you Mm -hmm. are, um, and you're also doing some decorating on the side with, with, on homes and things. Right. So tell me how you, um, because it wasn't long ago that you, quit your job and you decided to go full time with what you're doing here. Right. Um, yeah. So in January, the beginning of the year, I gave notice, um, that I was leaving my job and it was actually quite abrupt. It was, I'm an emotional creature. So I was kind of <laughs> having a day. I was having a day and I was like, you know what? This is a day. Uh, <laughs> right. You know, and so, yeah, so I did. And now I, I focus a lot on working with brands um, and um, doing design work, collaborating with other creatives. Um, you know, I do take on like e-design and design clients outside of social media. So I'm really just kind of I've immersed myself in the design community, which is what I love and what I've always wanted to be able to do. Mm, yeah. And who... Who are some designers that you admire? Oh my gosh. A long list. There are, yeah, there's a whole list. Um, So I absolutely love and admire Christina Blakeney. She's probably one of my biggest design inspirations. Um, Kelly Wurstler is a huge one. And then just like, as far as my peers, what I would say um, there are a few really great ones. Carmion Hamilton, uh, she is the owner of Newbie Interior. She also happens to be like my design bestie and my real life, like one of my real life best friends. She's amazing. And we actually partner together. We've worked together on a design project. Um, I love her. She's phenomenal. Um, I also love Shannon Claire. She's on Instagram. She's phenomenal as well. She has immaculate taste. Um, there are really just so many. I I'm I can't even. Uh, Forbes Masters is a really good one. Um, they're really great too. 
Um, yeah. Uh, there are just so many. Oh, Genevieve Gorder. Oh, I love her. Gen- She's Gen- so Bay. Yeah, I'm Genevieve good. is Bay. Like pretty much everything she touches is gold to me. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, those are just a few. I have a ton, but those are a few. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So what's next for you with your business? Where are you taking it, or where do you hope to take it next? Oh boy, honestly, I cannot even think that far right now. <laughs> like everything, is, <laughs> everything has just been such a whirlwind. So yeah, I kind of, in order for me not to get super overwhelmed, I have to like, you know, really think about, okay, what's ahead of me for maybe like the next six months. Right. Um, um, because it just kind of keeps things much more manageable for me. Ideally, I would love to, you know, eventually be like by coastal, um, that would be like a long-term, long-term goal. Um, I would love to have like a brand, a uh, collaboration with a major brand. Mm-hmm. Um, that would be ideal. Um, you know, to maybe work with like target or like a textile company or something to kind of create my own line. That would be amazing. Um, yeah, that's kind of where I am. Right. And then also just really just kind of building my own clientele and just continuing my social media growth. That's really important to me as well. Would be awesome for you to be by coastal. I love that Mm -hmm. idea. I also would love to see your bungalow in a, how in a book feature, like with bungalows and. Oh yeah. 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 That would be really cool. Um, Uh Just because I feel like, uh, I mean, I know it's all over Instagram and stuff, but I love print and I would Mm -hmm. love to see it like it's, it'll be forever. You know, when it's on a book, I feel like it's like something that people can look at over and over. Um, yeah. Yeah. What is the best, um, business advice that you ever got? Um, I, my, the best business advice that I ever got was, learn to accept help, um, and not feeling like you have to do everything. Right. So find somebody like, if you're really bad at like accounting, do not try to take that on yourself, hire it out or let someone else handle that. Um, or say if you're really bad with like, you know, computers or like tech, hire it out. Like, don't feel like just because it's your business and it's your baby that you have to have your hands on every single element of it. I know that it's important for you to know what's going on and for you to be tapped in as far as that. But as far as you feeling like you have to do it all, do not like allow other people who are really, really good at things handle that for you so that you can focus your time and energy on what it is that you're really good at. Cause that's, what's going to make your business great. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's a good good point. So I know that you are a mom and just balancing all that you have, how do you do that? How do you balance, you know, doing your business? And I mean, do you have, for example, when you're picking up the kids because they're not driving or maybe one of them might be close to driving, but they're, Mm -hmm. you Do you just kind of do a hard, like three o'clock is, you know, you blow the whistle and you've got, you're going to go pick up the kids? Yeah. So I basically kind of give myself um, time slots during the day that are dedicated solely to like work and hammering that out. And my kids and my wife respect that. And like when they're not in school or if they're not at work, they know that like, okay, this is during this time mom's at work. So don't bother me unless like the house is burning down or someone's bleeding. Mm -hmm. Um, And so, yeah, that's kind of how I have to do it because it's the only way that I can. It's really the only way that I stay sane. I am, you know, I have a teenager and I have a preteen. So they're really busy, especially during the school week. Um, so it's like, you know, after school, it's like one has band practice. The other one's at softball practice. I mean, it's just like, I'm constantly in the car and on the road with him. So I basically, I use my mornings to my advantage. Um, and I'm one of those people that I'm really, really good at focusing for about 
four hours. Wow, that's a long time. Yeah, like like basically like four hours in the day. So essentially from like I'd say like nine to like one thirty is my is like the time that I'm the most focused and that I can get the most work done. After that, I'm like scatterbrained. So Mm -hmm. I just try my hardest. I try my (laughs) hardest to do everything that I need to do, like all of the most important things that I like things that I have to absolutely pay attention to happen during those hours. Mm -hmm. And then again, I've got like another second win kind of in the evening after, you know, we're home and we've settled and kids are fed and, you know, settling in for the evening. Um, Then I've got another little section of time in the evenings that I'm, Mm -hmm. you know, I'll take a couple hours to do some work then as well. Yeah. I like that. I'm, I'm that way, but I can't do four straight hours. I think I can do three or two at the most, but then I definitely have to take breaks. But, but I, you know, I love to segment, segment my day. And I also like to kind of, if I'm doing podcasting and editing, I'll just like do the whole thing all like on one day, like this day I do this or it's, And when I say day, it's like either the morning or the afternoon. And then I see my clients all on one day or two days and it depends on the week and who I need to see. But, um, and then, you know, like, uh, and I try to get out. I, in the summertime, I have a garden. So I try to get out in the evening just because it really does help me Mm -hmm. sleep. (laughs) To be mm-hmm. out and doing stuff in the fresh air. And I need that. I need that time. Yeah. Otherwise, it's like just, I don't know, staying indoors. Uh, I guess because I'm, I'm indoors a lot with my work. Yeah. Or I'm at a coffee yeah. shop, but it's indoors. And so right. um, it's nice to get out there and get some sunshine or just some fresh air. Yes. But I, I do, would have to. Yeah, I do like to segment, segment my stuff too. So... Um, are you a reader? Do you like to read? I do like to read. Um, I am finding lately and recently though, that like audiobooks are my jam. And I never thought that they would be because I'm such an old school person. Like I love nothing more than, you know, the feel and the smell of a book and to turn the pages, mm-hmm. but just for the, um, you know, the way that my life is set up right now, <laughs> it's just, it's just a lot easier for me to have an audio book going um, because then I can be mobile and kind of multitasking at the same time. Yeah. Yeah. I love audio books. That's the only way I can get some things unless I'm at the beach and then I love real books. Then oh, I'll just yeah, yeah. sit down with the real book or mm-hmm. if I'm on a plane, for some reason I don't like listening to audio books when I'm on, on a flight. Um, I like to turn the page. Right. You know, yeah. Yeah. It also kind of gives people the <laughs> signal like, oh, she's reading, so don't bother her. Yeah, don't um, bother me. Yeah. yeah. Right. <laughs> but um, I do love audiobooks, and I, um, I particularly like to listen to them in the car. Um, I can't, I cannot, I can chew gum and walk, but I can't listen to an audiobook and shop. Like grocery, oh, even yeah. if I have a list, I can't, I just can't do it. I just can't do it. I'm just like, I can't, there's something, oh, I wish I knew like all the neuro whatever, because there must be a missing link there, a missing gap, right. because I'm like, I cannot do that. I can't even talk to a friend while I'm shopping. Like, I'm like, my friends know, like, I got to go. I'm going to Target. Bye. Like, I cannot <laughs> talk to you and shop. <laughs> <laughs> that's so funny so um so what are some books that you're loving so right now um kind of the two books that I'm reaching for a lot um my for as far as interior design mm-hmm. I am absolutely loving Orlando Soria's new book get it together it is phenomenal and this one's like an actual like book book um it's just so funny it's so real and so relatable and it's actually incredibly, incredibly informative as well. It's just done with so much wit and it's so Orlando. Um, so that's a really great one. And then as far as on audiobook, I'm listening to Secrets of Six Figure Women. 
Because I'm really just trying to get my financial game up. Yes. Yes. I hear you. <laughs> so like any type of manifestation or, mm-hmm. you know, like energy I can put out into the world in that term, mm-hmm. uh, that I'm doing it. But yeah, that's a really good book too. It's kind of like a self-help um informational type thing about finance and women and the way that we look at money and the way that money affects us and you know how we can get past certain barriers in order to gain more financial wealth and that kind of thing. Yeah. It's good. Yeah. yeah. You know, um when I think about um financially, you know, being on our game financially and, and just I mean, you know, we're in this because we, you know, you're in your business and I'm in mine because we love it, but we also want to do it full time. And I love Tony Robbins. He's one of my, um, gurus or whatever you want to call him. Yes. My wife loves him too. Yeah. He just, and you know, what's interesting is right away in his career, he had a product that he was selling. And, you know, for a lot of us and for me, I'm, you know, what is my product? Now my podcast isn't my product, but it's not something that people are purchasing. Right. Right. Um, right. So I, you know, I urge you to kind of be thinking about that because that to me is the key to a lot of success. Um, with my business, cause I'm a coach a business and life coach, it's a little bit harder to produce something that's tangible because it's a service, right? Yeah. Yours is is a service as well. So Mm -hmm. it's, um, you know, I think that is so much harder to, um, to promote even and to get people to understand, but but I love that he um, started in those infomercials like that's and he was like selling. I guess he was selling a book or some type of uh, seminar or something. But I, I love Tony Robbins. He's great. Yeah. And is. I do love Orlando. I got his book. Get it together. <laughs> it's too funny. He's got uh-huh. such humor. Like, he does. I'm like, where? Yes. Oh, my gosh. It's so yes. like. It's I've been hilarious. waiting for someone to talk like that for a long time. And he does. Right. And I love it. I love it. So, and he's got a great eye for design. I watch him mm-hmm. on Instagram and his stories as well. So, um, well, thanks so much for coming on and thank you for just all of the wonderful content that you put out because it's such eye candy for me. Everything you do, I'm loving and I want you to just keep going. And, um, I can't wait to see what's next for you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. And, um, yeah, so I'm really excited about it. Um, and I'm loving that. I'm that it's more about like real life, you know, Mm -hmm. it's not like painting this picture of perfection. Uh, so yeah. Um, and for anybody who doesn't already know or follow me, um, you can find me on Instagram at S Gardner style and you can find me on my blog at S G style blog. And from there you can kind of like get to all of my other social media. Awesome. Thanks. Uh, Yeah. Thank you so much. I loved talking with Shavonda. I hope you enjoyed hearing this podcast. Didn't you just love her talking about how she can focus for four hours? I totally want to talk to her and have that rub off on me. I also can't wait until she creates her own line. Won't that be exciting? I will be right there buying all of the things that she has to offer. You can see more of Shavonda on her Instagram account at S Gardner Style. I'll have all the links down below in the show notes. They'll also be at kareensanderfer.com. And I think I'm gonna dig up a few YouTube videos or some type of videos to include in the show notes. So you don't want to miss that. So make sure you're following her on Instagram and make sure you're following me and also check on the show notes at kareensanderfer.com and I'll have more information that you can read about Shabonda. And as always, don't forget to hit the subscribe button so you don't miss an episode. I'm also now on Spotify and of course YouTube. Thanks for listening and keep rising in your story.